Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark, this is MacGyver Backpacking. Today we're out here, I've got the Wraith from Trailhead set up, and we're gonna be talking about underquilts. So, you know, everybody wants to stay warm, especially this, this time of year. You know, this time of year, it's colder outside, it's a lot harder to actually stay warm. So I'm gonna give you guys some tips, show you how to actually set up your underquilt so that you will stay warm while you're out there. As long as you've got the right underquilt, and it's got the right amount of coverage, these tips on how to set it up should keep you warm throughout the night. So let's get into this, let's go. Okay, so let's just talk generally about this quilt for a second. So this is a UGQ 20 degree Zeppelin underquilt. It is completely undone at this point. I have loosened all the toggles, loosened everything, and it's pretty much just a rectangle right now. Uh, the way that they go on, so there's a, a tag, and that tag will be on the head end. Since that's my head end, nope, since this is my head end, uh, tag side will go on this side, the other one will go there, and you've got to understand that there are two different types of suspen suspension on here. So on this one, you've got black and white. So the black one is the primary suspension, and it is a loop. It runs through this channel all the way down the side, runs out the other side and back in and down the other side. So it forms a complete loop. The white one is the secondary suspension and it is attached to uh, adjustments on each corner so you can adjust and shift the quilt and get it centered. And then on each end you have shock cord that draws up and cinches the ends. Uh, with this one we have a draft collar which I recommend anybody who is out looking at a quilt get one with a draft collar because it's going to take up a little bit of that slack that you may have. So I'm gonna get this thing just hooked up and we'll talk about the first adjustments I'm going to make. Okay, so I went ahead and connected it. So it's just got clips that are gonna hook on the continuous loops on each end. And now it's just here hanging next to the hammock. What you'll notice though, is that it was drooping below the bottom of the hammock. Normally what you want is when you put your underquilt on, it's actually gonna be lifting your hammock up. And so that's gonna be what pulls this up against your butt when you're in there. Now, when you get in the hammock, your hammock is gonna sag a little bit, but you wanna make sure that this is up against you. So what I'm first gonna do is actually put it over the hammock like this, and then I'm just gonna look inside. And yeah, there is probably a 10 to 12 inch gap between the bottom of the hammock and the quilt. So I need to make an adjustment there. And so I'm gonna do that with the primary suspension, tighten it to raise it up. Now the adjustment for that is on, again, I told you the black is the primary suspension. So here is the adjustment for that. And so it's just a lock, a shock cord and a lock. And so I'm just gonna keep pulling it until we get it to the point where it is touching my hammock. Okay, so now you can see it's actually starting to lift the hammock up a little bit. And I actually normally like it a little bit more. So I'm gonna give it one more pull. Hey guys, so this is editing, Mark. So I was going through editing this, this video and realized that a whole section had somehow gotten corrupted and it was just really messed up. So it was unusable. And really what it was talking about is this secondary suspension. So this is one of the ends that was on the, the hammock. And so this would be up on the continuous loop and you've got the black, which is the primary, and then you've got the secondary. And that secondary, you adjust it to, number one, help with the primary in lifting it up. And if you look from this photo here to this photo here, you'll see that it went from being very loose to actually sucking it up even more, which is really what you're looking for. And that's kind of the baseline that I'm looking for, is it lifting the hammock body up by about that much. Then you can also go through and adjust the secondary suspension in order to center the quilt exactly where you want it. So if it was too far to the foot end, you'd go and you'd loosen the foot end a little bit, tighten the head end, and drag it towards the head a little bit. You can also uh, play with tightening and loosening each side in order to make it fit the diagonal a little bit better because you sleep on the diagonal in there so you want to have it so that uh, the secondary suspension is set up 
for that, uh, which means it's going to be tighter on the inside and looser on the outside so that it can actually fit that way. And you'll play with it and you'll get it right. I also uh, then go into using this suspension, this secondary suspension, to close up a gap, which we talk about in this next segment. So appreciate you guys dealing with, with me having a, a little error with some, some film, but hey, it happens. It definitely happens. And none of us are uh, immune to it, so thanks. Now back to the video. So now that I've got the secondary suspension adjusted, what we're gonna do now is take a look at this end. So the ends are the most important piece because right now, if you, I was to lay in there, you would see that there's an opening and the wind's just gonna be able to whip through there and it's gonna peel away any of the heat, any of the warmth that I've accumulated laying in here. So you've gotta make sure that those are closed up. It's easiest to do that if you have a friend, if you're out on the trail with somebody or preferably you set it up at home, you went out in your backyard and you had a family member or a friend come over and help you adjust it because then you can lay in there, the adjustments can be made and you're done. The way that we're gonna do it here is a little bit more difficult. So you have to figure out how much is enough without over cinching it. Because if you over cinch it, you may think, hey, I'm just gonna tighten it completely up and then it's gonna keep it nice and tight. But really what it does is it bunches it up and actually creates air gaps further down in the quilt. So you want it as little as possible so that it still spreads out, but creates a closure. It creates a seal along the back. So. What you can do if you are by yourself is get out your phone, set it up on video, and set it at the end up against the tree, aiming up at it, so that when you lay in the hammock, you can see whether or not there's a gap. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set up my camera, and I'm gonna, or if you've got a GoPro that you're using, you can set that up. But we're gonna use the phone and just set it up to record that. Now this hammock actually gives me a huge advantage in doing this in that the hammock body itself is see-through. And so as I'm laying in there, I can see exactly where the gaps are and that makes it a lot easier for me to be able to make adjustments. So I was able to lay in here and while laying in here, actually reach out and adjust this and get it just to the point where it's snug. So you can see that right now, as it's sitting here, there's actually a gap in there. And so if you were to just tighten it to the point where there's no gap, would actually be too much. So I've got this end connected and are adjusted properly. Now it's time to move on and do the same thing on the foot end. But while I wasn't in there, I also noticed that it's a little bit low right on this side. So I'm going to actually tighten up the secondary suspension a little bit to pull it back up. Now because I can't lay in it and adjust this end at the same time, I'm gonna go to the video that I took. Okay, so now I'm looking at me actually getting in there Okay, so now I'm in there and you can see, you can see the draft collar is taken up a lot of it, but it definitely means that it needs to be cinched up so that that draft collar is not visible. So I'm gonna start by just adjusting it. I'm gonna look at the, I'm gonna look at the head end, see how much I pulled out, and I'm gonna adjust the bottom or the foot end to the same, and we'll try it again. Okay, so from the inside, because I can see through this hammock body, I can see that it still probably needs about three more inches or so pulled to cinch it up. And so I'm gonna make that adjustment, get in it, try it again. And I actually reviewed the, the video uh, and it confirms that there's still the tiniest of gaps, probably uh, a half inch on the side right next to where my foot would be. So where my foot is, it's pretty much cinched up, but then it kind of gaps open a little bit, about a half inch for about, I don't know, six to eight inches. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit and that should cinch it up. All right, now it's time to get back in, check it again. All 
Okay, so I now have this underquilt completely adjusted for this hammock. And that's a key thing to remember, is that you have adjusted it for whatever hammock you adjusted it for. If you switch this to a different hammock, you're probably gonna have to make small tweaks, especially if you're going from, this one's a 10 and a half foot hammock. If I was to now put this on an 11 foot or a 10 foot or a 12 foot, I'm going to have to make adjustments to account for the differences. Also, different widths, different sag amounts, uh, you know, some hammocks just lay different than others. And so you may have adjusted it so that you're perfectly warm in one hammock and then you switch hammocks and you go out on a trip and you find that you're cold that night. And it may be that you just needed to make some adjustments to really pull it up and get it up underneath you. I can tell you that sitting here right now and when I was laying in here, the warmth coming off of this is incredible and it feels really nice to know that it's completely adjusted and ready for me to sleep in here without getting cold. There are some other tips to kind of help you with staying warm. Number one, go to bed warm. So don't get into bed while you're freezing. Do some jumping jacks, get warm, get in. Uh, if you're staying really cold, if you've got an Nalgene bottle, put some boiling water in it or just below boiling, throw it into a wool sock and throw that between your legs. That will help to keep you warm as well. Uh, make sure that you are fluffing up your down when, uh, when you get to camp. So if it's been compressed, make sure that you shake it out, fluff it, make sure that the baffles are evenly filled, that the down hasn't shifted to one end or the other. And that's what shaking it out a lot of times does is helps to, to spread it out and even it out. But take a look at it, feel around, see if there are any dead spots, spots where there is no, no down. That could definitely give you a bad night. Uh, additionally, if you've been using your quilt for a while, think about taking it somewhere and getting it washed using a down tech wash uh, in order to get that loft back because over time the loft oils from your body oils from touching it uh, will start to degrade not really degrade but compress the down a little bit keep it from uh, unfurling to the to the fullest ability that it can and it will keep it from being as warm as it possibly can uh, also remember that most quilts are rated about 10 degrees uh, lower so if it's going to be 30 degrees you probably want a 20 degree quilt if it's going to be 20 degrees you probably want a 10 degree quilt and that's kind of a standard now there are some exceptions there are quilts out there that have over stuff in them that are that are good really to the range that they're called for but for the most part you want to play it safe and either test it ahead of time and know what you can use your quilt to or make sure that you have that range, that barrier in there so that you're good when it comes time to spend the night outside. Oh, one more thing that I had forgotten that you can actually do to help your quilt is sometimes, like when I was having the problem when I was laying in there, I was able to adjust the secondary suspension right here to pull it up, to actually snug it up uh, underneath, like kind of where my calves were. But another thing that you can do is you can get quilt hooks that actually go over your ridge line and we'll pull up, uh, and you can put one on the head and one on the foot end. You get them from Dutchware gear. They look like, like an A, almost like an A with a little swirly at the bottom of each one. So it's like up, and so the ridge line will go through where the upper side is, and then these lines, both your primary and secondary, will go over the hook on one side, and the other side will go over the hook on the other side. Do one on the head end, one on the foot end, and instead of the under quilt pulling from here, it actually pulls up, uh, which is very helpful. So definitely a trick you can do if you're having trouble with air gaps in your hammock. All right, guys, appreciate you guys checking this out. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below. If you have any tips or questions about what I did that didn't make sense, let me know uh, and we'll cover those. All right, guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, go check out Patreon. I will see you guys down the trail.